So I'm sure many of you have seen the movie Interstellar's beautiful renderings of a black hole. And although we have predicted what a black hole might look like, we have yet to actually take a picture of a black hole. You might be surprised to know that taking this first image could come down to a computer vision algorithm. In this talk, I'll be introducing this exciting problem and show how computer vision could have a big impact on astrophysics. So if you go out past the city lights tonight and look west in the night sky, you'll see the Virgo constellation. And at the head of Virgo is the giant elliptical galaxy, M87, 54 million light years away. And if we could zoom in very far towards the center of M87 with the radio telescope, you would see a jet of radio emission caused by a supermassive black hole at the heart of the galaxy. And if we could zoom in even further to the tip of the jet, you would eventually reach this supermassive black hole. Although we have some idea as to what a black hole might look like, no one has actually imaged a black hole before. But hopefully soon that's about to change. Recently, there's been an international effort to create an event horizon telescope capable of imaging a black hole for the first time. And if we're able to take this image, we expect to see a ring of light about the size of an orange on the moon caused by the gravitational lensing of, of, of hot plasma zipping around the black hole. This image could help to answer a lot of important questions. For instance, does Einstein's theory of general relativity hold up in extreme cases? But what makes taking an image of a black hole so hard? Well, radio telescopes are constantly plagued by diffraction. And since this black hole is so compact and so far away, to take its picture at this resolution, we would need an Earth-sized telescope. And although creating a telescope this size isn't possible, by joining telescopes located around the world, the Event Horizon Telescope is creating a computational telescope the size of the Earth capable of resolving structure on the scale of a black hole's event horizon. This network of telescopes is scheduled to take its first picture of a black hole just next year. And this technique of building a computational telescope from many disjoint telescopes around the globe is called Very Long Baseline Interferometry, or VLBI. So how do we take a picture with a lot of disjoint telescopes? Well, it turns out that for every two telescopes in our telescope array, we get a single measurement of the underlying image's 2D spatial frequency. So with just six telescopes, we would only sample at most 15 points. And this is an incredibly sparse number of points to reconstruct an image from. So to increase the number of samples, the source is observed over time. Since the baselines between telescopes change as the Earth rotates, this amounts to carving out different elliptical paths in the frequency plane. Using these sparse, noisy spatial frequency measurements, our goal is to fill in all the missing information and reconstruct the underlying image. If we were given measurements that covered the entire frequency plane, this would be trivial. However, we only see a few samples, and therefore the reconstruction problem is ill-posed, since there are an infinite number of possible images that will fit the measured data. And at this point, we can abstract away all the astrophysics and look at this as purely a computational imaging problem. Our challenge is to find an image that fits the data and also respects our prior assumptions about how the universe looks. We encounter these kind of problems all the time in computer vision, whether it be deblurring an image or reconstructing a medical scan. Techniques from these computational imaging problems, as well as recent advances in computer vision, could help in taking the first image of a black hole. To address this problem and begin the flow of ideas from computer vision, we developed a new imaging method that we call CHIRP. And before I tell you more about CHIRP, I just want to show you a sample CHIRP reconstruction shown on the far right using synthetic data generated from only six telescopes. Our algorithm CHIRP tackles a number of difficulties in solving the problem. And although I'll only be able to give you a brief overview of some of them in this talk, I'd love if you stop by our poster later today and talk to us more about the details. So one feature of VLBI that makes it so different from other sparse imaging problems is the atmospheric noise. The bright plasma around a black hole emits light waves that travel to Earth. Because one telescope is closer to the emission than the other, there'll be a time delay in the received signals. This delay is key for extracting the 2D spatial frequency measurements used for image reconstruction. 
However, for short radio wavelengths, atmospheric differences cause random delays in each signal. This leads to a phase delay in our frequency measurement that scrambles our signal and makes reconstructing the image very difficult. Widely used methods of imaging are not able to handle this large phase error and produce terrible results if it's not handled properly. Generally, the data must be first calibrated, but this can be a time-consuming and often manual process that introduces user bias. Instead, we make use of a clever algebraic trick called phase closure that allows us to be completely invariant to the effects of atmospheric error. By incorporating this directly into our optimization, we can go from this image on the right to this without requiring any atmospheric calibration that may bias our results. Once we understand our system, we must decide which image best fits the measurements. Since our problem is ill-posed, we always have to inject some sort of information about what images look like in order to decide on an image. However, since we've never seen a black hole before, this poses a real conundrum, since what should a black hole prior even be? What should we assume about the structure of black holes, and how much does whatever information we inject into the problem bias our final image? One of the simplest image priors to try is one on adjacent pixel differences. However, they result in a pretty blurry image with spurious detail, and additionally, these handcrafted priors don't give us the flexibility in easily incorporating different image assumptions. Perhaps instead we would actually like to learn the distribution of different types of images. Ideally, we'd like to learn the joint distribution of all pixels in a type of image. However, this is really tough due to the exploding of dimensionality and variability of images. Instead, a more manageable and successful approach is to focus on modeling patches of the image. Although there's a huge number of possible image patches in the world, previous work has shown that pieces of natural images share a lot of commonality that can be modeled using Gaussian mixture models. So we can sample many, many different patches from images and fit a model to them, and then we can sample from our model and see what structures it learns is likely to occur. So here I show some samples from a natural patch model. And notice that although each of these patches is synthetically generated, they appear quite similar to the distribution of patches that we sampled from natural images earlier. But perhaps patches from natural images look different from patches of celestial or black hole images. So by training a patch model on these kind of images, we can try to capture the features specific to them. So it turns out that although many of the patches look quite similar to natural patches, the model also captures features specific to its own set of images. For instance, the model trained on celestial images looks like it builds a model for lots of little dots or stars, and the black hole model sometimes generates image patches that look like the light caused by the event horizon. Each patch model learns a little bit of something different about the underlying building blocks of a group of images. And then we can use this information to push the image optimization in a direction that favors these kinds of patches. Reconstructing with this patch prior not only substantially improves the results, it also allows us to easily explore a rich space of different image assumptions. However, we see that only small variations result when reconstructing from the different patch priors, so this suggests that the type of image we train on doesn't bias us too much. Here I show a comparison of state-of-the-art results on synthetic data. The target ground truth source image can be on the top, is found on the top, and our algorithm chirp is shown right below it. Since the clean method can't automatically handle those large atmospheric phase errors, we gave it data with no atmospheric noise whatsoever. But what happens if the real black hole image doesn't match our predictions? We still want to make sure that we can accur accurately reconstruct the image around the black hole. So we also test the algorithms on celestial, non-black hole images. Each algorithm has different strengths and weaknesses. For instance, BSMEM sometimes gets really nice super resolution results. However, at the cost of often adding spurious incorrect detail. One thing I find nice about our results is that we can handle a wide variety of sources, ranging from very simple celestial to complex and even natural images without any additional parameter tuning. Additionally, Chirp seems to be able to handle noise pretty well. As we increase the amount of noise, 
we like to see that CHIRP produces fairly consistent results. So even though the first image data from the Event Horizon Telescope won't be taken until next spring, there's plenty of other exciting real data you can easily download from online to test your imaging methods on. Here I briefly show some results using real data, and although there's no ground truth to verify, our reconstructions seem to align well with previous results. And it's really exciting that we may even resolve two potential sources in a mission two that were previously unresolved. And we're working with the Boston University group on verifying this result now. So beginning to work on a new interdisciplinary problem is often difficult due to the large learning curve. However, it doesn't really need to be. To encourage all of you to work on this problem, we have created a website that will hopefully allow you to dive right in and easily contribute to taking the first image of a black hole without being an astronomer. And we recently released a new imaging challenge online that I hope many of you will participate in, so you can check it out at the link shown below. CHIRP gives us a great foundation for black hole imaging, but it's only the beginning, and we hope that by pushing the limits of astronomical imaging, it will result in future ex um, exciting future discoveries. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you very much indeed for a galactic scale presentation. Um, I have a question about ground truth or, or verify that. Yeah. If you think you found one, how do you actually verify that it might be a black hole or if we've not seen it before, is there, are there sort of another source or something you can use to kind of verify? Yeah, so we want to be um, really sure that what we eventually release in the end as the picture of the black hole is really what is there. So one thing to try is a lot of these you know, as I mentioned, having these data-driven priors allows us to try a lot of different image assumptions and inject that into the imaging process, into the optimization problem to make sure we kind of get the same image always. But also it's great if, you know, we, we design a bunch of different imaging algorithms and hopefully run them all on our final data that we take next year. And hopefully they, if they all kind of agree on an image, then we'll, we're confident in our results. So I think that that's the key. Cool, cool. Thank you very much indeed.